I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. No one can stop me. Okay, fight fans, fight fiends, welcome back to Manny's Thoughts. I, of course, Manny MTL or Manny Montreal. Make sure to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and obviously, thefightcity.com. As usual, I'll give you guys my thoughts on what's going down in combat sports. Last week was crazy, next week is shaping up to be even crazier, so let me get started. First off, I gotta start the show with a little bit of bad news. Tony Luis got a last minute call to fly across the pond for a title, and he got screwed. The one good thing is that his performance and the fact that he got screwed put his name in a lot of people's minds. Now hopefully this translates and he gets to sometime fight in Montreal or something, maybe at the Bell Center, that would be awesome. Now, speaking of Montreal, I would like to give some congratulations. First off to Adam Danger Ayubi, who is now Quebec's 81 kilogram champion. Congratulations, kiddo. If you want to see a fun fight, go watch any fight this kid's involved in. Wow. Now, uh, also congratulations to the Eye of Tiger management team, uh, who put on a great fight in Sorel, Quebec. None other than the young Stephen Bang Bang Butler had a great outing, first round KO. And uh, Shillery Polit had a hard fought decision win over a tough opponent that wouldn't go away. Just a great night of fights in Sorel. Congratulations all the way around. Now, uh, as far as the news goes, we got treated to maybe what is considered the fight of the year now Provodnikov versus Matisse. Thank you, both of you, you crazy bastards. What a fantastic fight. First off, Matisse, great job executing your game plan. That's how you win a fight. Now, uh, Provodnikov, I'll say this. I honestly think you were meant for another time. And honestly, nobody should let you fight a fight that isn't 15 rounds. This dude needed three more rounds. He could have pulled it off. Now, um, a lot of people scored it a draw, and even the commentators on HBO had uh, varying opinions. However, I did score it one round for Matisse. Game plan did it. So, also on that card, just before that, we were treated to Terrence Bud Crawford, last year's fighter of the year in my eyes. Just a terrific outing from him. Back to work. He gave off the first two rounds, measuring his dude and everything, and people were a little worried about him, but... Bud pulled it out just as I knew he would. Great fight from him. Now, uh, for Julio Cesar Chavez, I am done with him. Thank goodness. And hopefully everyone else is done with him too. He did the one thing that Mexican fighters consider sacrilege. He could have went to jail for horrible acts. He could have uh, been caught cheating or beating his wife. He could have uh, ran from the police. He could have had drug use issues. He could have been caught on steroids, Marquez. And uh, pretty much every Mexican would still follow him. The one thing you cannot do if your fan base is Mexican is quit on your stool. Now, what makes it worse is that he comes from a legacy in boxing, and uh, Mexican fight fans are going to have a tough time swallowing this one. Now, I say good riddance. Hopefully, he goes to Dancing with the Stars, stays out of my sight, and uh, I don't ever have to talk about him again. Now, um, this leads me to another upsetting thing. Sergey Kovalev made the ignorant move of posting a stupid tweet. Now... Some people call it racist, and, you know, you can argue me on the fact, but I will say this. Kovalev did take it down, so that should, you know, say it all right there. But I will say this. Adonis is a champion, and, well, he's gonna have to stay above this and, you know, keep his class and not say anything. I'll say this for Adonis and every other fight fan out there that's got a brain. Kovalev, you know what? You are an ignorant peasant. And if it wasn't for these people, you would be wrestling bears back home. You'd be in a traveling circus for the mere fact that you can eat a punch. I really hope Adonis now takes you super seriously, does whatever he can to put his hands on you, and puts you out of all of our memories. Kovalev, you are a no good, low down piece of crap. And I honestly hope you realize how stupid your tweet was. Now, um, 
This being said, let's talk about next week. We've got a bunch of stuff to talk about. First off, free on Spike, Friday night, we've got PBC coming back at us with a great night of boxing. Headlining that is none other than Anthony Durrell, not to be confused with his brother. And uh, he's fighting Badu Jack. Now, it's not a great fight, but, you know, I would say it's a Berto Spike quality fight. And uh, I think Al Heyman's saving his more quality stuff for NBC and... Uh, you know, the bigger stations. Either way, still a great night of fights. Now, uh, that's going down in Chicago. If that's not good enough for you, you've also got Invicta. Now, Invicta, you're going to have to go online, or if you have Fight Pass, it's an all-female fighter uh, organization, just great MMA. It's a great place to figure out where your future stars are going to be coming from. Now, uh, also on the Fight Network at 7 a.m., if you get a chance, one Fighting 26, formerly 1FC. Now, uh, they changed the name because, well, there was too many football teams out there hashtagging and messing with their Twitter. But the point is, it's a great outfit. Maybe the number two company next to the UFC because of the Asian market. Now, uh, a little notable, Manny Pacquiao is part owner of that company. And uh, honestly, it's doing great things. They put on great cards. 7 a.m. might be a little early for this guy, but thank God I got a DVR. Now, uh, I will say this. The one thing I will say about that card, if you've ever heard the name Ben Askren, uh, well, basically, he's a guy that dreams of being in the UFC and talks a big game, but honestly, just looks like a stupid Cabbage Patch doll. Now, um, this being said, in Montreal, more importantly, going down Friday night, if you got tickets, Joe Rogan's at the Corona Theater. And uh, there's a great undercard boxing event going on. Underdog Boxing Gym on the corner of St. Catherine and St. Laurent. It's 20 bucks at the door, 15 ahead of time. Just a great little amateur boxing club. Come support the youth. If you're down here for Saturday night in Montreal, well, here's a perfect thing to give you a little appetizer Friday night. Make sure you check them out and support. It's local talent. Now, um... This brings me to Saturday night. It's very important. Montreal's going to be buzzing. We have the UFC in town. But before I mention the card, I just want to point out, if you can't watch the UFC, probably free and online, you can get your hands on Bama 20 or King of the Cage. Now, uh, there is a boxing gala going on at Madison Square Garden. And honestly, you would think this would be the big thing everyone would be talking about. The problem is, is that it's a heavyweight fight between Klitschko and Bye Bye Jennings. And honestly, you know what? When Klitschko starts caring about his career, maybe I will too. Now, um, UFC's in Montreal, and that's what's important. Now, a lot of people have been talking negatively about this card, but I don't see why. It's just stacked with talent. You know how many of these guys have been dying to see fight? And now we've got the chance. So people, listen to the card, see how much homegrown talent we have on there, and by all means, go buy tickets. If the scalpers are losing money because people gave up their tickets because of Rampage or, or um, you know, another fight being cancelled, then screw them. Trust me, it's a fantastic card. Let me explain. First off, we got Randa Marcos. Judo throws and punishment. Just fun fighting to watch. Then after that, we've got my fighter crush, Valerie Letourneau. If you've never seen this girl fight, think Golden Gloves with Arturo Gatti's heart. She boxes so well. Just some great infighting from her. Honestly, the first time I watched her fight, I uh, felt a little something in my heart. Okay, so Nordin Taleb. The Mezrin of MMA, just straight gangster, great fluidity, great kicks, great punches from this guy. He has not shown us everything he is capable of. I am looking forward to that fight. That leads me to Olivier Aubin-Mercier, uh, also Ultimate Fighter finale uh, fighter. And honestly, just fun to watch. Looking forward to that fight too. Next up, we've got the Messiah of MMA. Chad Laprise, the actual Ultimate Fighter winner. All these guys appeared on the show together, so it's fun to see them on the card together. Now, we start heading into the veterans of MMA. We've got Sarah Kaufman, one of the first females in Canada to break through on the big show. Looking forward to watching her fight. Then after that, we've got Patrick the Predator Cote, 
all around great guy. Not only did he serve our country, but he's fought with his balls out. And honestly, he's all heart. Just uh, cannot wait to watch him fight. Got the chance to watch him train at the Grant Brothers. This dude can hit hard. I am looking forward to his fight. If you also uh, like your UFC in French, check him out because he's their commentator. Great work from him. Now, uh, this leads me to the main card. John the Bull McDessie. I witnessed this young man hit pads. I did not want to be the pads, the guy holding the pads, or even in earshot of those pads ever again. Honestly, they were screaming for misery. I walked out of there with a headache. The kid is just vicious. There's no other word for him. Vicious. Eve the Tiger Jaboin is also on the card. Another veteran that I've watched fight a thousand times. Cannot tell you how much fun this guy is to watch. Just a great fighter all the way around. Now, uh, one of the non-Canadian fights is on. We've got Bisbing versus Dalloway. Basically, this is uh, somebody's going to get knocked out kind of fight. Next up, we've got the controversial fight of uh, Maldonado. Because Maldonado was supposed to fight Rampage, but Bellator put a lawsuit on that. It's a big cluster fuck. Anyway, go check out my other links. You'll see what I'm talking about. Stepping in, Steve Bosse with a four-fight contract. Looking forward to this guy fighting. So far undefeated in the ring. Looking forward to him um, making his big comeback. So um, this leads me to the main event. And honestly, this is the fight that nobody respects. He is maybe the greatest pound-for-pound -pound fighter the UFC has ever produced. And yet nobody shows him no love. He's never going to test positive, And uh, he's probably not going to win knockout of the night anytime soon. However... He is by far the greatest martial artist, in my opinion. Now, Mighty Mouse Johnson is just a fantastic champion, and he's going to be defending his belt against Horiguchi. I'm not even sure if I'm saying that dude's name right, but it doesn't matter, because all you got to remember is Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. Basically, he is... a uh, one of the greatest fighters for movement and speed. It's 135 pounds. You gotta watch how many punches and kicks get landed. Honestly, the only way you could make this more dangerous is if they shrunk the ring. Just a fantastic fight and a great way to end a Montreal UFC. I, for one, am happy the UFC is back in Montreal. Hopefully you are too. Make sure you check out my other shows, Fight Week Roundup and Fight Week Rundown. Get all your information. Check out thefightcity.com. We've got crazy articles on all things combat sports and Montreal. Now, last but not least, like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys next week. Ha 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 ha!